Last week I was on a family vacation and my 12 year old nephew was there and he owns a cell phone and I noticed the first couple of days he was watching his cell phone a lot, like sometimes hours at a time watching videos. And one day I was driving him to go uh, do go-karts and he was sitting next to me uh, on his phone watching these videos. And to me, the video sounded the way a casino sounds, where it was just nonstop mental stimulation, just complete bombardment of the senses. I mean, obviously it, it was a video, but then it had like music and noises and sounds and voices and everything, but it was just nonstop. And it kept him totally riveted to the phone. Like, I mean, sometimes, you know, he wouldn't even, you know, hear you if you were talking to him. Um, that's how effective it was. You know, and I was thinking about this later, thinking how uh, it seems like for pretty much all of us, our minds have to be engaged somehow every second of every day that we're awake, certainly. I don't know if you ever tried this, but if you like lay flat, you know, just lay down, close your eyes, calm your breathing, calm your body, and try to clear your mind of everything. I mean, I'm, not, I'm talking like not even like the sound of crashing ocean waves or floating clouds or colors, but just like think about nothing at all. I mean, I think it's pretty much impossible. I've tried it, you know, I might last 10 or 15 seconds or whatever before, you know, I start thinking about something. And I think that's pretty much the case for all of us. I think it's a very rare human being who has the capacity to clear the mind of all thought whatsoever for any extended period. It's probably a skill that, you, that only a very few people have been able to develop over time. But I think pretty much for all of us, we have to be mentally engaged. Okay. And it's fine. Um, you know, and I was thinking about the fact that, okay, there are 8 billion people of uh, people on the planet, right? 8 billion of us. And genetically, you know, we're all pretty much the same. I mean, obviously slight, you know, variations in genetics, but like fundamentally we're all pretty much the same. But one of the things that makes us unique, makes you know, each of you unique is your personality and the way you think and your imagination, right? The way you can um, learn new material, um, find new connections between things, um, come up with new interpretations and new perspectives, um, the way you assemble new information and combine it with information that you already know, like all these things, the way you, you think is completely unique to you. And, you know, in a world where there are 8 billion people, it's like, you know, what are the ways that you can make your own unique contribution to your life and to the world? Whether, you know, it doesn't have to be on a global scale, but, you know, to other people's lives. And one of the ways is developing your imaginative capacity. Because again, the way you imagine, the way you think is unique to you. Nobody else thinks exactly the way you do and nobody else can think exactly the way you do. You do. But um, when we're like on our phones being passively stimulated by this like nonstop sensory overload, right? We're not doing anything that is like unique to us. If 10 million people are all like zombie, like watching the same video, right? There's not a whole lot that's distinct between them, you know, in those moments. Um, so I was thinking about the importance of developing your imagination because it's a way that you can develop, um, who you are uniquely among the 8 billion people on the planet. And it's a way that you can, develop your skills and your abilities to uniquely improve your life and the lives of people you know and the lives of people you come in contact with in one form or another. So I was thinking about this and I was thinking about, well, three ways to through sort of three techniques that you might be able to use to um, help develop the skill of using your imagination, right? Um, one of the ways is, you know, I do a lot of reading, okay, uh, newspapers, books, whatever. And, you know, I realized only this past week that much of the way I read is, I would call it like a superficial, um, cerebral, intellectual level, where certainly if I'm reading a newspaper article, I'm reading it just for like, you know, 
can I understand these facts? Can I process the information? Can I absorb and remember the information? Okay. And I was reading a book the other day. I finished a book that I'm going to be talking about sometime in the next couple weeks. It's called How We Learn. And one of the things the author said was that, um, uh, okay, the book was about how your memory works. And he was saying that all things being equal, we tend to remember things where more of our senses are engaged. Okay. It seems to make sense. So I was thinking, wow, you know, one way to, um, not just, uh, improve your ability to remember information, but one way to develop your imaginative capacity is when you're reading, try to visualize what's going on, you know, in the sense, like almost like make a movie in your head. You know, so if there's a description of, you know, some action or whatever in news or something you're reading in a book, like try to act it out in your mind. So create a picture, you know, and almost hear the people talking or whatever, you know, um, I mean, it's, it's something where I think it's a technique that you can use, um, you know, sort of a habit that you can develop, um, doing it every day over time will hopefully develop your imaginative capacity. And one of the things I mentioned in a past video is that, you know, when you learn new things or you, you engage your mind in different ways, in new ways, um, and ways that are not necessarily easy, um, you form new connections and mo the vast majority of the connections that you form are in your unconscious mind. You're not aware of them. So certainly when you read new information, you can, you know, combine the new information to the to information you already know and you can form conscious connections that way. But that's just like the tip of the iceberg. Most of the connections your mind makes, you know, whether it's at a physical level or an intellectual level or a creative level are in the, the unconscious mind. So you're not consciously aware of it. So I was like, wow, that might be a really good way to um, develop your imaginative capacity, which again, you know, the point is to develop your unique way in the 8 billion people who are alive um, to do something meaningful and beneficial for your life and for the lives of other people. So that was one where, you know, you, you sort of act out in your mind, you create a, a visual performance and, and an auditory performance of what you're reading. Um, all right, there's another one. And this actually relates to the video I think I did last week where I was like, oh, so, um, you know, one thing that might be fun to try is imagine something that you don't want to do. Okay. Cause like recently I've been talking about developing habits and you know, it's easy to develop habits for things you want to do kind of difficult to develop habits for things you don't necessarily want to do. But I was thinking, wow, well, another way to, um, increase your imaginative capacity is to try to think of something that you don't want to do. And j just like as a fun exercise. Okay. And then try to creatively come up with a way to, um, convince yourself that it's something you want to do, like really try to be, you know, creative with how can I motivate myself to want to do this, not to like, you know, have the willpower to push myself through it, but is there a way I can use my imagination to you know, make it so that, wow, this is a really appealing thing that I want to do. All right. So that was like just another technique, you know, that you might try and it might be fun every once in a while, you know, to see if you can do this. Um, Oh, and then the third uh, technique that I was thinking about, and hopefully, you know, this would be fun to try every once in a while is it's, you know, on the, uh, the theme of perspective, like, you know, I've talked before how reading, reading a lot, reading, you know, a lot of different things can expand your perspective, expand your perspective on who you are in the world and things like that. Um, and I was thinking one, potentially fun way to engage your imagination is to try to imagine yourself in somebody else's body. Like let's suppose you're talking to somebody or you see somebody walking down the street or, you know, somebody, you know, is talking on your cell phone or there's some action taking place in a movie or whatever. Try to imagine you're the other person. You know, what does the world look like through his or her eyes? And you know, what might you be thinking and just, try to act out what the other person is doing, like imagining yourself as that person. Um, so, you know, that might be just another fun way, again, to engage your imagination. 
And it's not, you know, just, oh, can I, you know, I've got five minutes of spare time. Is this like something fun I can do? Yeah, you want it to be fun. But the point again is using your imagination, right, is unique to you, the way, you, you know, your imaginative capacity. So if you can develop your imagination, you can potentially develop your unique way, right, to improve your life and to positively affect the lives of other people. Um, so, you know, those were the three ways. One, um, when you're reading something, try to create, uh, try to dramatize it, you know, in your own mind, create like a, a movie of what's going on. Um, the other way is um, every once in a while, think of something that you would hate to do. I mean, just like not even something that, you, you know, you need to do, but just some awful thing and just try to have fun with it and try to convince yourself in some way that, oh, this is something, you know, really try to motivate yourself, like, oh, this is going to be super fun to do. And then the third way is to imagine yourself as somebody else, right? So you're like, you're in the other person's body, you're seeing things through his or her eyes and, you know, hearing and everything like that. And just to try to take yourself out of your own perspective and put yourself in somebody else's perspective. So those three ways um, hopefully are, you know, fun, techniques that you can use to slowly over time develop your imaginative, imaginative capacity and as a result develop you know, who you are uniquely as a person among 8 billion people. Um, I, I want to, uh, oh so um, a few, I got a few subscribers, thank you to uh, bonus extra 888, I'm guessing that's not your real name, no problem, and Rot. I uh, apologize for uh, mispronouncing people's names uh, for subscribing. And then Rot and Ahmed had some really nice comments. Rot talked about, he asked about um, doing more videos on mental health. And, you know, while the, the theme of this channel is on discovering your passion, defining your calling, mental health definitely plays a part. I touched on this last video. Um, I, really, I think, you know, developing your imaginative capacity really can play into mental health as well. But yes, that will be, you know, a theme, you know, being touched on in a lot of these videos going forward. And then Ahmed uh, mentioned he's from India. And congratulations to India. Maybe some of you have heard or read uh, just a couple days ago, they safely landed a spacecraft on the South Pole of the Moon, making India the fourth country ever to uh, land a safely land a spacecraft on the moon, but the first country ever to land a spacecraft on the South Pole. So congratulations to Ahmed and, you know, all of India for that tremendous achievement. Um, so again, you know, three techniques to develop your imagination because, you know, that's part of who you are uniquely. And, you know, you have important, unique ways that you and you alone can impact the world, you know, in, in a small way or a medium way or a large way or whatever. Um, but developing your imagination is a way to develop who you are uni uniquely. And that's something that you should absolutely celebrate. Um, so uh, I hope this video was useful. Um, going forward, I promise to do everything in my power to make these more and more useful. And have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video.